All right, time to dive into a five-star, truly expert level analytics tip. We're gonna talk about how to explore data models outside of pivots using something called cube functions. Now, two quick caveats before we dive in. Number one, if you haven't viewed the data modeling pro tip or you haven't learned about data models in the past, I'd highly encourage you to do so. Number two, you're gonna need a version of Excel that's compatible with the data model and with Power Pivot. If you're not sure, go on Google, search for where is Power Pivot, and you'll jump to the Office Support website that looks like this. And here you'll be able to see the exact versions of Excel that include access to these data model and Power Pivot tools. Now, let's get back to it. So, cube functions. The easiest way to explore data in a data model is through a pivot table or a power pivot. But what cube functions do is allow you to pull or retrieve specific filtered values out of your data model and pull them directly into worksheet cells. So for instance, if you want to create a view that looks like this, you can use cube functions to do this. And in my experience, there are four types of cube functions that I use almost exclusively. The first is called a cube set. And essentially a cube set is a collection of items or cube members from your model. It's essentially equivalent to an entire column from a table in your model. In this case, we've defined a cube set that contains information about product brands. Now within cube sets, you have something called cube members, and these are shaded in blue here in the visual. A cube member is a single item from within a cube set. So in other words, it's one item out of a table column. Here we're looking at different values within the membership column in our customer table, golden, silver, bronze, and normal. And note that we also use Q members to define quantitative measures or calculated measures like transactions or quantity. Next up, we have a special type of member called a cube ranked member. These are shaded in green here in the visual. And these are just like cube members. They're individual items within a cube set. The only difference is that they're based on an ordered rank, and that's what allows us to do things like show the top five products by quantity, for instance, like you see here. And last but not least, we have our fourth primary type of cube, which is the cube value. And those are all of the cells shaded in yellow. They're the actual numerical values that we're aggregating based on a set of member expressions. And those member expressions help us filter down those values to retrieve the proper numbers. Now these can definitely be tricky and a little unfamiliar to work with at first. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to build a view just like this, but keep in mind that there are many other types of cube functions as well. And I've included a link for more info here. What this short link will take you to is the office support documentation page for cube functions, which looks like this. And here you can scroll through and learn a little bit more about the fundamentals of cube functions and some of these other options that I'm not covering. So common use cases here, for one, building spreadsheet-based reports or dashboards that sit on top of data in your data model without having to rely on pivot tables. And two, cube functions can be a great way to document all of the sets and members within your data model. So with that, let's jump into our pro tip workbook and practice building a report view like the one you see here. All right, so if you're following along with the course, you know the drill, head to your table of contents, Scroll to your purple analytics tips here. We're gonna drill into this five star cube function demo. Go ahead and link out to that sheet. Now, what you're looking at here is a basic blank template that I've created of a sample report. There's no formulas or anything here. It's just formatted cells. And our goal is to convert this and wire it up into a fully functional report that pulls in data from the underlying data model. Now, to get started, we need to do a quick review of the data model that we're working with. So I'm going to jump into the Power Pivot tab, click on Manage the Data Model, and let's jump into Diagram View here. So this is the model that we're working with in this workbook. We've got transaction data with three calculated measures, transactions, total quantity, and revenue. Those are the measures or metrics that we're going to pull into our report. And we also have a number of fields that we can pull from these three lookup tables. We've got calendar fields like the day, the month, the quarter, and year. We've got customer information like countries and cities, gender and member card status, and products which include things like the brand, the name, the retail price, and the cost. So let's go ahead and actually insert a pivot table 
from our data model and I'm going to drop it into an existing workbook. I'm going to put it right here um, in our cube functions worksheet and let's drop it right here in cell H2 and press OK. And what we'll do is use this pivot table to help spot check in QA and make sure that the numbers that we're populating with cube functions are accurate. And then once we've done so, we can go ahead and delete the pivot itself and be left with just the custom report that we've built. So as you can see here, we've got a few different breakouts of the data. We're looking at three different metrics, transactions, quantity, and revenue. First, we're breaking it down by month for the previous three months, April, May, and June. Then we're doing a breakdown by member type, gold and silver and bronze. And this third table here is showing the sales by product for the top five products based on either transactions, quantity, or revenue. So let's start at the top with sales by month. And I'm gonna drill into this pivot and I'm gonna pull in some of these fields, transactions, quantity, and revenue. And in this case, we wanna break it down by month from my calendar table. Grab month name, pull it into rows. And in this case, all we really care about are April, May, and June. Press OK. Let's sort it A to Z. So this is a little preview of the view that we're trying to achieve right here by pulling those same values into the worksheet cells themselves. So if you recall, the cube value function was the type of cube that can pull in or aggregate those numerical values. Problem is, if we start by just typing cube value. We're going to open the parenthesis. Our connection is going to start with an open quote and it's going to be this workbook data model. You can press tab to lock that in. Close the quote. Now the second argument and the third and the fourth and the fifth for a cube value function basically ask you to point to a member expression and that member expression helps tell Excel how to filter down the values to return. So in this case we're filtering down based on two different conditions or criteria, the month name in B5 and comma to the measure name in cell C4. So that's really all I need for this cube value function. If I close the parenthesis, press enter, I get an NA. And the reason I get this error is because cube values don't know how to interpret cells that just contain text. So right now this cell means nothing. It's just a string of text that says transactions, same thing with my month names, April, May, June, gold and silver bronze. So what we're going to need to do is convert these text strings into actual cube member functions. So let's start with our metrics here. We can type equals cube member, open quote, this workbook data model. We're going to start like this every time, comma over to the member expression. And this is the field or the item from our data model that we want to capture in this cell. So open another quote. This will allow you to access the tables and fields in your model. In this case, we want a field from our measures. And if we enter a period, it takes us to the next level in the hierarchy, which is the actual list of measure options here. And we want transactions. So I'm going to tab it in, close the quotation, close the parenthesis, press enter. So now it still says transactions, but now this is an actual cube member. And we're going to go through the same process here for April equals cube member from this workbook data model and the member expression. Remember, open the quote again. This time it's coming from the calendar table period to the list of columns. We want the month name column. And now because we want a specific month within the month name column, we're going to add one more period and type the name of the month surrounded in brackets. So we want specifically the month of April. And then close the quote, close the parenthesis. Feel free to pause on the screen for a moment to make sure that you've got the right function. And I'm gonna press enter and check it out. Two things happen. Number one, my cube member cell now takes a value of April, which is not just text, it's an actual cube member. And our cube value is now returning a proper number, which is 6,588, which we can map to our pivot as a QA and that does match. So we are on the right track. And now that we've defined some of these, it's very easy to apply them to the rest of our cells. So we can grab this transactions column, and copy it, paste it two more times, and then simply adjust that last argument from transactions to total quantity. 
and from transactions to revenue, press enter. Same thing with April, May, and June. I'm going to paste this two more times and just change the April in the final argument to May and finally to June. And just like regular Excel functions, we can treat our reference types carefully here because our months always live in column B. We can fix that column reference. And because our headers, our measures, always live in row four, we can fix that row reference and press enter and check this out. Drag down, drag over, and boom, we've got all of our cube values populated. We can check against the pivot. All looks good. And now we're starting to cruise here. We can actually grab one of these cube members from month. We can paste it into the member type template here. And now instead of the calendar table, we're gonna open this up and we want a field from our customer table. And the column that we want is the member card column. And in this case for the first value, the member specifically that we want is golden. So we can type it in, close the quote, close the parenthesis, press enter and then copy that two more times to populate silver and bronze. So silver right there and bronze right here. And now check it out, copy this cube value, paste it down. Only the references that we want to move are moving. The other ones are fixed. They're still pointing to the correct headers up here, as well as the proper members for member type here in column B. So let's go ahead and our pivot Let's pull month name out, pull member card in, and we can just kind of resort this a bit. Gold at the top, then silver, then bronze. These are the values we should be seeing. And boom, those are the values that we do see right here from our cube values. So we are two for two. The last thing that we need to do here is populate this sales by product matrix, which is going to pull in the top five products. So here's the catch. We don't know offhand what the top five products are. So we can't just start typing regular cube members from scratch like we did with month or member type. Now we could sort the different product brands in the pivot to figure out what the top five will be. But if we want this view to change dynamically and always sort based on current data, we've got a better approach to do that. And what we're gonna do here is introduce a cube set first here in column B16. So let's go ahead and type a cube set function this time. As always, going to start with the connection to this workbook data model. And now the set expression is going to be the list or the collection of product brands, which are going to come from our product table. So open the quote, products dot product brand. And now here's the key, the last little option after the dot, I don't want to select all and I don't want to select any specific item. So I'm going to type members, which is going to force this cube set to store all of the possible members within that product brand column. Close the quote. And now we need to update or populate the additional arguments here. So for the caption, what we want the cell to display, let's do brands. And now the sort order, this is how we determine how any cube ranked members get sorted within this set. So in this case, we're gonna sort descending high volumes on top. So that's the number two. And what do we wanna sort by? Well, we can choose any one of these measures. Let's go ahead and choose transactions. And because that comes from our measures table, I'm gonna open the quote, measures dot transactions, close the quote, close the parenthesis, pause the screen for a moment, make sure you've got that down, it's a long function, and we'll enter that in. So all we see is the word brands here, but this cell contains an entire set of members, and that's gonna allow us to now use something called a cube ranked member to pull individual items out of that set. So check it out, equals cube ranked member from this workbook data model. Now the set expression is a reference to a cube set, which we just created here in cell B16. Let's press F4 to lock it in because that cube set will always live there. And now for rank, you'll notice that I've created a little index from one to five there in column A. That's going to be our rank index. So let's just point over to that rank number and we can go ahead and close off the function, press enter. And the first item we see is all. If we click and drag down, 
we see a few different product brands appearing, Hermanos, Telltale, Ebony, and High Top. Now the issue is that all is not an individual brand, it's actually the total across all brands. And that will always show up at the top of a cube set. So the easiest way to adjust for that is to simply start with a rank two, then three, then four, then five, then six. And because we've set our references well, we copy that value, paste it down, drag it down, drag it over, and it's looking good, but let's do one final QA in our pivot. We're gonna pull member card out, drill into products, pull product brand in, and we're gonna sort those product brands descending by transactions and press OK. Check it out, Hermanos, Telltale, Ebony, High Top, Tri-State. Same exact five that we populated using cube rank members and cube sets. And it looks like the transactions, quantity, and revenue values match up perfectly. So the pivot has done its job. I'd recommend keeping one just for you know, quick and easy data exploration. But in this case, we can go ahead and select those columns, delete the pivot, and there we go. We're left with our perfect custom formatted report that we built entirely using cube formulas.